so uh, let me just write down uh, the Hamiltonian and uh, remind you some results from the previous lecture, and then uh, we'll try to uh, continue and uh, extract some physics uh, from this stuff. So uh, this is the Hamiltonian. Uh, those chi's are my runner modes. And uh, the expectation value uh, of this thing is zero, and uh, uh, the second moment is um, Q minus one factorial over N to the Q minus one times some normalization constant. So uh, last time uh, we, uh, we talked about uh, uh, the Schwinger-Dyson equation. Uh, one can define uh, the green function uh, G We do not sum over j, it's just a single j. And uh, define self energy. And the Schwinger Dyson equation, uh, or equations, it's a system of two equations. One equation is uh, uh, g to the minus one. Uh, is uh, G bear, uh, the bear green function to the minus one minus sigma. And uh, the other equation is Uh, okay, uh, this is nice. Uh, we can solve uh, uh, the problem, sort of, and find uh, the correlation function of fermions, at least the two-point function. Uh, but uh, the most interesting physics is, is concerned uh, with uh, fluctuations around this solution. So uh, this uh, system uh, has uh, collective modes. And uh, the best way to represent those collective modes is to say that uh, uh, this is just uh, uh, a stationary solution uh, for some dynamical variable. G is actually a dynamical variable, and G star uh, is uh, uh, its stationary value. And uh, uh, we put a star here, but uh, in fact, Uh, this thing is dynamical, <coughs> and it fluctuates. And uh, those fluctuations will contain uh, all, all interest in physics, including out-of-time order correlators. Uh, so uh, the plan is uh, to write an effective action for uh, these dynamical variables. Uh, and uh, uh, then, uh, of course, it's a system with infinitely many degrees of freedom because uh, uh, G and sigma are functions of two variables. And there will be uh, infinitely many uh, fluctuating modes. It turns out that there is uh, one mode that is most important. Uh, and uh, uh, we can uh, make some estimate. Uh, uh, if we want uh, to solve this problem in uh, uh, an easy regime, uh, then we should assume that uh, uh, beta j, this is one large parameter of the model. Uh, it's interesting when beta j is large, uh, it's much less than n and much greater than 1. And uh, 
uh, in general, uh, fluctuations uh, are of the order of 1 over n. Uh, but uh, there is a soft mode. Uh, which has fluctuations enhanced by factor uh, a beta j. Uh, so it's a beta j over n. And uh, uh, one can uh, say also that uh, the fluctuations are small because uh, uh, this, uh, the stiffness for these dynamical variables uh, j and sigma around uh, the stationary solution is high. It's proportional to n. And for the soft mode, uh, the stiffness is less, and therefore the fluctuations are greater. Well, uh, I'll explain what it means formally, but. Uh, uh, let me just uh, give some uh, perspective uh, uh, as a condensed matter series. Maybe it's uh, not so natural uh, to you. Uh, condensed matter physicists de deal with uh, many body systems like thermal liquid or boson liquid, like liquid helium. And uh, in the liquid helium, of course, everything is made of uh, helium atoms. And one can, uh, in principle, compute uh, the propagator of a helium atom. But, uh, the most interesting thing is uh, uh, collective modes, like uh, uh, sound uh, in liquid helium. Uh, and uh, uh, the same uh, thing is true here. Uh, uh, this, uh, this model is made of fermions, but uh, uh, we introduced uh, uh, some Bose variables de that describe uh, uh, collective modes like sound. Uh, and uh, the exact interpretation uh, will be like this. Uh, uh, I will write down uh, some effective action uh, in terms of abstract variables g and sigma. Uh, and uh, the Schwinger-Dyson equation will appear as a stationary uh, configuration for this action. And, uh, uh, Feynman diagrams will appear as uh, the perturbative expansion for fluctuations around this action. In fact, uh, this action uh, may be used non-perturbatively, but uh, that requires great care. And honestly, I don't know how to do it. Uh, but uh, uh, in the perturbative regime, uh, there will be an exact correspondence between uh, Feynman diagrams and uh, fluctuation corrections uh, to the effective action. So uh, let me just write down this effective action. Uh, in our paper with uh, Josephine, uh, we derived it using uh, the replica method, but the derivation is long, so uh, let me skip it. And uh, I'll just show that uh, this action uh, gives uh, uh, the same result as uh, the direct diagrammatic expansion if we do it perturbatively. And uh, the, uh, the derivation is actually non-perturbative, but uh, there is a caveat uh, at some place a, an integral uh, appears that uh, doesn't converge. And uh, to deal with such integrals, uh, one has to do uh, it uh, in the uh, complex domain uh, by carefully choosing the in integration path. And uh, uh, that is tricky. So I'll skip that. Um, there will be an effective action I that depends on uh, sigma and g. And it's proportional to n, so I'll divide it by n. And uh, let me say that uh, uh, g depends on uh, tau 1 and tau 2. Uh, and uh, These two points are points on the time circle. Uh, time goes from zero to beta, and uh, these uh, two points are identified. So time is uh, on a circle. Uh, 
and uh, uh, G is anti-periodic uh, in both uh, tau 1 and tau 2. So if we uh, unwrap the circle and consider uh, tau 1 and tau 2 uh, as the real variables, then uh, uh, the function should be anti-periodic in both variables. And uh, uh, given uh, two such functions, we can write down the section Uh, it's uh, the logarithm of phi fan of minus uh, little sigma. I'll explain what it, that is. So I, I tried to write large, so it doesn't quite fit. But uh, uh, it's just this integral. Uh, and uh, uh, the integral is taken o over, uh, over this circle, both in, in, time, in tau 1 and tau 2 variables. And uh, the expression uh, is uh, periodic in both tau 1, tau 2, uh, therefore we can uh, integrate over the circle. The phi fin is uh, essentially the partition function of a single fermion. Uh, we know that uh, uh, phi fin of A, where A is an anti-symmetric matrix, is uh, the square root of a determinant of A, uh, and it's the same as uh, the integral over Grassmann variables. Chi is a vector of Grassmann variables. Uh, now, Uh, uh, let me uh, uh, represent this action in a perturbative, uh, in, in such a way that one can do perturbative expansion. First of all, we need to define uh, the integration measure. Uh, this uh, uh, sigma and g uh, should be integrated over, and the integration measure is, is chosen such that uh, It's basically a flat measure, uh, but uh, it, it has a nice normalization. And G sigma is by definition one half uh, integral of uh, sigma of tau 1 tau 2 uh, g of tau 1 tau 2 and it's the same as minus one half uh, trace of uh, uh, sigma j Uh, so uh, this is uh, the action, this is the integration measure, and we want to uh, compute correlation functions. Uh, the recipe is, uh, uh, if we want to compute some correlation function, like uh, Uh, 
this is an expression that is defined in the original model. It can be written as uh, the integral of uh, g of tau 1, tau 2, Uh, divided by just integral and similarly one can calculate uh, 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 things like this The difference is that now we have uh, to use uh, two green functions. If uh, variables are tau 1, uh, tau 2, uh, tau 3, tau 4, then we use uh, g of tau 1, tau 2 times uh, g of tau 3, tau 4. And uh, this should be plugged in here. So uh, we have some uh, uh, perturbation theory machine. Uh, it, it allows us to calculate uh, all such correlators uh, by integrating uh, over d sigma and dg. And let, let me show how it works and why it works. Uh, so Uh, can you say that again? Yeah, I'm just saying when you do these four point functions, you only have tau one, tau two, tau three, tau four, not have tau one, tau three, tau three, tau four. Uh, okay, uh, let me write it large uh, and I'll explain uh, how uh, uh, this expression is composed. Uh, this is one index j, and uh, this uh, to a paratop. And there is another index uh, k, uh, which are uh, paratop. And uh, the recipe is uh, to just uh, uh, take the green function uh, for indices that form pairs. Now, we write e to the minus i as e to the minus and g sigma, uh, whose integral is uh, already defined, uh, times e to the Now I promise to explain uh, this little sigma. Uh, the little sigma is just uh, it's just this, uh, the time derivative. But uh, later on, uh, we'll modify this expression. Uh, it will be an approximation, but we'll uh, replace uh, the differential operator, it's uh, something uh, more convenient. Uh, so, uh, now, the perturbation th theory is done by expanding uh, 
this expression in powers of uh, uh, capital sigma and uh, G. Uh, the Pfeiffian is uh, is plus one, uh, right? It's e to the minus i. Uh, the Pfeiffian is. Uh, uh, Why minus one? It's just the Pfeiffian of, of this thing. You mean this? Yes. No. It's uh, it's a little sigma, which is uh, which is the uh, the, tau, uh, the time derivative. Ah. Ah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, it should be uh, um, it should be a plus here because uh, it's uh, uh, minus i, and uh, we should expand uh, expand this uh, in powers of uh, sigma and g. Uh, in g, it's it's simple. It's already uh, just uh, the fourth power. Uh, let uh, let's express the five here. And uh, I'll, I'll use details so, so it, it's explicit. Uh, 5n of uh, d tau minus sigma is written as uh, uh, the problem is uh, d tau is a differential operator and its 5n is infinite. And uh, uh, it needs to be regularized. So we write uh, 5n of minus d tau minus sigma uh, now uh, this thing is finite and we need to uh, assign some value to uh, uh, this Pfeiffian, which is uh, ill-defined. Uh, how do we assign it? Uh, we remember that uh, uh, the Pfeiffian is the partition function of a free fermion. And uh, the differential operator here is uh, the Lagrangian of a, a single Majorana mode that has uh, vanishing Hamiltonian. No Hamiltonian at all. Just uh, the Lagrangian, which uh, consists of the time derivative. So uh, this thi uh, thing should be the partition function of uh, uh, a Majorana fermion at uh, temperature T, uh, which doesn't have any interactions, at, uh, and this is just the square root of two. Uh, so uh, this is the recipe to define this Pfeiffian, which is by itself is uh, ill-defined. Now. Uh, Let's ex expand this expression. And let's take the logarithm of it. Of course, uh, pi fin is uh, the square root of the determinant, so we can just write one half. Uh, the logarithm of the ratio of the determinants. And uh, that ratio is just Just this. Uh, 
so um, this is actually uh, a, the a bare green function to the, uh, to the minus one. Oh, no, 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 uh, sorry. Uh, uh, minus one is here. <laughs> and that is uh, the bare green function. And we can expand it. Okay. just uh, this uh, T-layer expansion of the log rest. And uh, each of these terms uh, will be represented uh, 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 by some surface. Uh, it will be uh, a Feynman diagram uh, that consists of uh, pieces of, uh, of a surface, like uh, a sheet of paper. But uh, those sheets uh, will be uh, of different shapes. So uh, this sheet... Uh, has uh, this shape. It's a, uh, a two gone. <coughs> Let me use a uh, dashed line here. And uh, uh, the dashed line uh, corresponds to sigma. And the solid line, uh, I call it a border of that sheet, corresponds to the Berggren function. And uh, the second term we have uh, sigma on the sides and uh, uh, the Berggren function on, on the top and on the bottom. And this thing corresponds to So this is one sheet. Uh, two, three. Uh, now, uh, the uh, other uh, term in the expansion is uh, g to the 4. And uh, it will be drawn like this. Uh, G to the Q minus 1, actually, but uh, uh, somehow I switched to uh, the Q equals 4K, so it should be G, G to the Q. But uh, in the drawing, I'll use uh, uh, power 4. And uh, I'm not good at drawing, uh, so, uh, so something like this. So uh, there is this uh, dotted line. Uh, let me call it a seam because uh, actually uh, those flaps uh, that are attached to the, uh, the dotted line represent uh, 
places where uh, we will actually attach the uh, sheets. Uh, so uh, diagrams will be composed of uh, uh, such dotted lines, and to each dotted line, uh, four sheets will be attached. For example, uh, how do we draw this diagram? This is a Feynman diagram from the usual uh, diagrammatic expansion. Uh, uh, it's a contribution to the green function uh, that, is not, uh, that is not suppressed by 1 over m. Uh, in the new notation, it, it, it will be drawn like this. Uh, the green function itself should be uh, uh, a thing with uh, like a two gone, something like this, where uh, we could attach sigma. But uh, we won't attach sigma. We just write, uh, we just draw This is a two sheet. And uh, uh, to this, we'll, uh, we'll attach uh, three additional uh, two sheets uh, such that uh, uh, they're glued along this line. So we're making uh, a two dimensional structure. Uh, like gluing pieces of paper along the dotted lines. And uh, uh, similarly, we can uh, deal with letter diagrams. Now, uh, let me draw the letter diagram and uh, explain what actually happens. The letter diagram, or a letter diagram, because uh, the letter can have any number of runs. This will be represented as Uh, two, uh, uh, two sheets glued together and uh, there will be uh, some little flaps attached to, to the dotted line and so on. Uh, now, uh, what's going on here? We have this expression, uh, and we need to integrate over j and sigma. Uh, we take uh, the exponent, uh, do, the, uh, do the expansion. Actually, uh, we need to exponentiate and uh, consider uh, high order terms. So it, it looks like uh, this, uh, this expression, the exponent, is like a bag, and we uh, can uh, pull out uh, any of the elementary uh, pieces uh, from that back, like uh, this, this, that, and uh, that thing on the top. So uh, we uh, pull a, a, a set of such objects from the bag, and then uh, we integrate it, uh, integrate them over g and sigma, and. Uh, uh, 
Now imagine uh, one object uh, has uh, a sigma on it. Another object uh, has a G on it because uh, uh, G to the Q, uh, it's G to the Q. And uh, uh, like uh, in the derivation of the Feynman rule, when we integrate over uh, uh, some variables with the Gaussian measure, uh, we draw a connecting line. We connect things. Uh, in the uh, current situation, uh, we do not draw lines. We just glue things together. So uh, uh, the seam uh, which carries uh, four copies uh, of G can be glued uh, to any of these objects uh, which carry uh, sigmas on their sides. And uh, we glue G against sigma and they disappear. And uh, as a result, uh, we get uh, a two-dimensional structure that is uh, uh, glued uh, out of uh, pieces of paper. So uh, this is uh, uh, the diagrammatic expansion uh, for, uh, for the action. It's expanded uh, around uh, the Berggren function. There is a variant of this expansion uh, uh, that uh, uses the, uh, the solution of the Schwinger Dyson expansion as a starting point. But uh, uh, that is just a technicality. So uh, uh, diagrams uh, that uh, appear from the effective action are two-dimensional, uh, but uh, they correspond one-to-one -to, -one to, uh, to the usual Feynman diagrams. And uh, uh, just for fun, let me uh, draw more diagrams. Uh, these are uh, three-level diagrams for the, uh, the six-point function. And uh, they discussed in a paper uh, by uh, Rosenhaus and Ross. So essentially, we have a three sheet in, in the, at the center. And we glue uh, uh, two sheets on the sides, and we can continue. We can glue more two sheets. Uh, and uh, this will be a ladder. So uh, there are ribbons uh, that are glued uh, at the center. And uh, such a diagram uh, represents a, a three-level contribution, uh, a leading contribution to uh, the connected uh, six-point function. And another diagram that represents a contribution to the connected uh, six-point function is this. Uh, we can uh, use, sorry, uh, Uh, we can use three ribbons and attach them uh, to the same dotted line. Uh, uh, there are diagrams with loops uh, that are suppressed by, high, uh, by larger factors of uh, 1 over n. This one is uh, suppressed like 1 over n squared, 1 over n squared, uh, but uh, there are diagrams with loops like And that will be suppressed by a higher factor uh, of 1 over n. Like uh, 1 over n to the q, I think. OK. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, some piece of formalism. Let's try to. Uh, get some uh, physics rather than uh, doing these formal calculations. Uh, 
uh, now uh, let's think about the effective action as just a functional uh, on uh, these variables g and sigma and try to imagine uh, the landscape of this functional. Uh, so uh, there are some uh, uh, high and low points and we want to find uh, uh, some valley which will represent the soft mode. So unfortunately I have erased the action. Let me write it down again. And uh, uh, we can uh, calculate uh, the stationary point of this action uh, by writing the, equation, uh, the corresponding equations. Uh, we can uh, differentiate with, uh, with respect to uh, sigma and with respect to g. When we take the derivative with respect to uh, 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 g, we get uh, uh, this equation. And uh, uh, when we get uh, the variational derivative with respect to sigma, then we get uh, this equation. or we can write it this way. Should be minus one actually. And uh, this is minus.
These are the Schwinger Dyson equations uh, obtained from the effective action. Now, let's take this approximation. Uh, and uh, we also assume that uh, uh, beta is much greater than j to the minus 1. Uh, in this approximation, we can ignore this term. And uh, uh, this way we obtain an approximate schwinger dyson equation. So, uh, we have uh, two systems of equations, uh, and uh, it's a nice thing, they, uh, they have uh, a time reparameterization symmetry. If uh, G sigma is a solution, we can find another solution in the following way. We uh, replace uh, G of tau 1, tau 2 uh, with uh, G of F of tau 1, f of tau 2, <coughs> delta is 1 over q. And uh, we also replace uh, sigma of tau 1 tau 2 with This f, uh, yeah, uh, to, to do everything rigorously, it, it should be monotonic. It should be a map uh, uh, from the time circle to itself. Uh, it should be an element of diff S1 plus. Uh, however, uh, right now I, do, uh, I, I will do something very non-rigorous. Uh, I'll use this function uh, that maps the time circle to the uh, complex plane. And uh, it will be an analytic function. Uh, uh, all the derivatives are well defined, and it will work. Uh, later on, I'll, I'll try to be more rigorous. On the second line, it should be q minus 1. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, let's do this. Let's take uh, uh, G uh, beta equals infinity, the zero temperature solution. It's minus uh, uh, B to the delta. B is some, uh, some constant. And, uh, uh, let, uh, let me be not very rigorous, and uh, instead of uh, this nice expression that is written uh, on the time circle or on the timeline, uh, 
will make something that uh, makes sense when uh, uh, the chaos are complex variables. Now, uh, let's choose uh, some function f. This is the function f, uh, and uh, we call this variable z, and uh, uh, g uh, obtained according to this recipe. Uh, let me call it conformal uh, green function. It, it's a function uh, that represents a, a solution with a conformal symmetry. Uh, gc of tau 1, tau 2 is g beta equals infinity. Of uh, z1, z2, <coughs> d z over d tau to the delta. Uh, d z2 over d tau 2 to the delta. And it can be also written as uh, 2 pi over beta j uh, to the delta. Um, uh, g c tilde Uh, 2 pi over beta tau 1, uh, 2 pi over beta tau 2, where uh, GC of phi 1, phi 2. These are two points on the unit circle. Uh, uh, numbers uh, between uh, 0 and 2 pi with uh, identified endpoints of the interval. And this is uh, minus b to the delta uh, I guess it's 2 delta uh, minus b to the delta uh, times um, phi 1, 2 to the minus 2 delta This uh, involves uh, a little bit of cheating. If we just do the transformation, of course, we won't get uh, uh, this non-analytic factor. Uh, the sine of phi 1, phi 2 will just get the first factor, phi 1, 2, this uh, sine function. Uh, but uh, then we add this uh, uh, sine by hand. And so uh, we have obtained a solution at finite temperature. Uh, using uh, the zero temperature solution and, uh, and the conformal symmetry uh, and uh, the reparameterization symmetry. Uh, but uh, this is not the only solution uh, that can be obtained from the zero temperature solution. Uh, 
Uh, another solution, uh, or a more general solution, is this. It's uh, the same formula as before, but uh, we'll use a different function, uh, z of tau. e to the i phi, phi is phi of theta, and theta is to pi over beta tau. So uh, z of theta is a composition of three functions, and uh, phi is uh, the diffeomorphism of the circle. It's, uh, it's actually an arbitrary diffeomorphism of the circle. So, let me introduce some weird notation. I'll call it uh, GIR. It, this solution is valid in the infrared because uh, we have imposed uh, these constraints, which uh, is an infrared constraint, this, this one. And uh, it also depends on phi, on, on the geophomorphism. And... Uh, 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 we can uh, write it in, in, in this form. It's uh, 2 pi over beta j to the 2 delta uh, g conformal, which is written here, So uh, this is a new solution, and uh, there is a whole family of such solutions that are parameterized uh, uh, by different uh, diffeomorphisms. And uh, in the uh, approximation that was used, uh, they are all uh, solutions to the, uh, to the Schwinger-Dyson equation. Of course, uh, uh, none of them uh, is an exact solution. Uh, however, uh, the solution uh, that, uh, that is written uh, previously is closer to the exact solution than uh, the one for an arbitrary phi. Uh, so uh, we can imagine that uh, in the space of all possible configurations uh, uh, G and sigma, Uh, there is a manifold of quasi-solutions called M, and there is a special point, uh, G star, sigma star, that corresponds to uh, an actual solution. Yeah. Yeah, uh, G, uh, okay, uh, this is a, a formal game. We have an effective action. We find uh, uh, configurations of G uh, that corresponds to uh, uh, small values of the action, almost minima of the action. It, uh, we find a value. Uh, 
Uh, however, uh, those uh, Gs may be interpreted as propagators. So we may think that uh, uh, there is some uh, bosonic system that fluctuates uh, and uh, uh, on top of that uh, bosonic system, uh, there are propagating fermions. And then G is the propagator of that system. And uh, uh, the actual uh, two-point function or four-point function or higher point function uh, for the SYK model can be obtained by uh, integrating over a fluctuating G uh, using uh, those propagators in each, in each case. Uh, uh, what is this uh, uh, manifold M? M Diff, uh, uh, diff plus S1 uh, is uh, the set of possible functions phi. For each phi, uh, we get some point on, on, on this manifold. But uh, we should take the quotient of uh, PSL 2 r because uh, phi and uh, the composition of phi with V uh, define uh, the same uh, G I R if V uh, maps uh, Z to a z plus b, c c z plus d. Uh, v is a map uh, of uh, a phi to a new co coordinate phi. However, uh, to each coordinate phi, one can associate a z like uh, e to the i phi. And if z is transformed in this way, then uh, the actual solution doesn't change. Uh, of course, uh, GIR doesn't, uh, doesn't change. And this is a subtle point. Uh, we're talking about uh, quasi-solutions. And those uh, quasi-solutions uh, obtained uh, by this formula uh, have a, a SL to R, PSL to R symmetry, the symmetry of such, uh, such conformal maps. Uh, if we apply a diffeomorphism that uh, is not a symmetry, we'll obtain a new, a new causal solution. Uh, what, what, uh, what shall we do in, in the actual case when uh, we uh, uh, want to find actual solutions rather than causal solutions? Then uh, the recipe is, is this. Uh, we write uh, G as G I R plus G U V, and uh, this decomposition is not unique. But uh, the idea is that uh, 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 G I R is basically given by uh, that formula. And GUV represents uh, the correction that is obtained if we uh, put uh, this uh, little sigma term back, if we put uh, the uh, time derivative back into the equation. Uh, and say, uh, same for sigma. It's... Uh, 
and uh, the effective action I of sigma G is uh, written as uh, some action I prime of phi uh, sigma uv guv. So this direction is uh, uv. And the perpendicular direction is, uh, sorry, IR. And the perpendicular direction is UV. And uh, uh, GUV and uh, uh, sigma UV are not invariant under PSL tor. However, if we integrate over uh, the perpendicular direction, we'll obtain something uh, that is in invariant under uh, SL tor. And uh, the result uh, should be it's some effective action of uh, phi modular PSL tor. So uh, this picture uh, should be slightly clarified. Instead of uh, just this manifold M, we, uh, we have a valley uh, where the effective action, uh, where uh, the a action is low, and it's represented roughly by the effective action along, along the uh, soft mode manifold if we integrate over the perpendicular direction. And uh, uh, there are subtleties. That these perpendicular directions uh, can be chosen in different ways. Uh, in our paper with uh, Jedifin, uh, we picked a particular uh, recipe and uh, uh, did some long calculations and obtained some answer. Uh, uh, if you use a different scheme, uh, the intermediate calculations may be different, but the final result must be the same. Uh, at the level of accuracy uh, uh, I want to pursue right now, it doesn't matter. In the zeroth order approximation, we just, into, uh, we just uh, go along this line M, uh, and uh, we almost ignore uh, this UV correction. Uh, so, uh, what shall we get in this situation? Uh, this local action will contain uh, the Schwarzschild derivative of the function phi. And uh, I'll try to explain it now. Uh, I will not have time to derive uh, all the details, but uh, I'll try to explain why uh, the Schwarzschild appears. So, uh, G, now let's consider uh, only the IR part, not uh, the UV part.
Panda. So that was uh, the previous scheme. Uh, now the idea is this. Uh, this is a function of two variables. So they lie somewhere on, uh, on the time circle. And uh, this is a good solution when uh, tau 1 and tau 2 are far apart. When uh, they come closer to each other, uh, things get more complicated because uh, uh, we need to take into account uh, the UV corrections. Uh, we will not take uh, into account uh, the UV corrections to uh, the green function itself, but uh, we will try to uh, correct the energy. The energy is given by the effective action, and uh, uh, we'll try to estimate the energy uh, the correction to the energy when uh, uh, these two uh, points are close to each other. And uh, this correction to the energy should depend uh, on the asymptotic of the green function uh, for uh, tau 1 and tau 2 approaching, to, to, uh, approaching each other. And so uh, uh, let's uh, obtain a, a, an asymptotic expansion uh, of uh, an expansion of uh, this thing, it's, it's just a Taylor expansion, uh, near tau 1 equal to tau 2. So let's write uh, uh, tau 1 uh, <coughs> where tau plus is tau 1 plus tau 2 over 2. The zero temperature solution is proportional to uh, Z1 minus Z2 to the minus 2 delta. And uh, uh, Z is given by this expression. And we'll uh, simply tailor expand Z. So we'll write. Expanding to the third order, it turns out we have to expand to the third order. plug this Z in here. Everywhere. Of course, uh, there are two variants, Z1 and Z2, that use uh, tau1 and tau2. And uh, uh, as a result, we get the following.
1 plus uh, delta over 6. Uh, the short chain derivative of uh, z with respect to tau, uh, tau, tau 1 minus tau 2 squared. This all follows from the Taylor expansion. So when uh, two points tau 1 and tau 2 are close, uh, the green function is uh, close to uh, the zero temperature solution, but there is a correction. And that correction couples to uh, the UV perturbation. And uh, this, uh, this way we may guess uh, the effective action on the following form. It's uh, the Schwartz and derivative. So uh, this is the effective action uh, that only includes uh, the soft mode. Uh, there is a long story how to, de uh, uh, how to derive this effective action and obtain uh, this coefficient uh, alpha s. Uh, however, uh, it's not possible to obtain this uh, uh, coefficient uh, uh, purely analytically. It's some numeric coefficient. And uh, uh, its calculation requires uh, solving uh, uh, the schwinger dyson equation uh, for all distances between tau 1 and tau 2, starting uh, with very small distances of, of the order of j to the minus 1. What is possible to do analytically is to relate uh, different effects of uh, UV perturbations. This is one effect of the UV perturbation. It, it contributes to the effective action of the soft mode. And another effect is the correction uh, to, the green, uh, to the green function. And uh, 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 to relate this to, uh, one needs to develop uh, uh, some renormalization theory. So uh, let me uh, uh, just uh, do it qualitatively. Uh, we have uh, uh, the actual perturbation uh, that is relevant in, in, uh, in the UV, but not in the uh, IRA, uh, not in the infrared, and it, it is the time derivative. Uh, it will produce uh, some change to the green function in, in the infrared. The same change can be produced uh, by another perturbation uh, that is not exactly a time derivative, uh, it, it's something else. And uh, we're free to choose uh, the perturbation uh, that is convenient to use uh, because uh, uh, right now we're not uh, uh, calculating the exact effect of, of the uh, UV perturbation, but we're comparing its effect on uh, different physical quantities. And uh, uh, 
One can choose uh, uh, the uh, UV perturbation in such a form uh, that uh, it's uh, analytically tractable. Uh, and, uh, let me. Write it down. This is the actual perturbation, uh, and uh, it's nonlinear. Uh, in the UV, nonlinear means that uh, the Schwinger Dyson equations uh, cannot be uh, linearized. Uh, that is replaced by. Perturbation of the following form. There are some uh, coefficients that are not very interesting. And uh, so uh, instead of uh, this function that is concentrated at very small distances. Uh, oh. No, it's, uh, I shouldn't write this. This corresponds to the time derivative. It's, uh, it's the delta function. And uh, the previous thing was the inverse of that. Um, uh, we use a function uh, uh, that is uh, power law with some, expo uh, with some exponent h. h is the scaling exponent. And uh, we'll introduce some uh, UV cutoff. Uh, Uh, using a window function, a u, uh, yeah, just uh, just this. And uh, this is called C, uh, the renormalization variable. Now, uh, let me uh, draw a cartoon of this function.
So this sigma is concentrated uh, uh, at small values of C. Uh, and uh, one can write uh, the response And this will be a linear response. And I'll draw it this way. How do we calculate uh, the linear response out of uh, a perturbation? Uh, very schematically. Uh, let's take uh, some diagram uh, uh, for the green function. And uh, let's uh, insert uh, the perturbation somewhere in the diagram. This is sigma. Uh, since uh, it's a linear response, we insert it only once. If we want it a nonlinear response, uh, we should be inserting it uh, multiple times. And let's uh, uh, consider all, uh, all the diagrams with a single cross, a single insertion of the perturbation to the green function. These diagrams uh, form letters. So a typical diagram looks like this. So, the perturbation uh, uh, to the equation of motion uh, is renormalized and produces uh, a perturbation to the green function. And uh, schematically, one can write uh, this equation like uh, uh, delta G uh, is k plus k squared plus k cubed plus dot 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 uh, times sigma, where k is a single block of this letter. This is called k. So uh, one can consider letters with a uh, different number of runs and uh, there will be a different power of k. And all this sum can be written as k is 1 minus k. And uh, uh, now functions uh, sigma uh, is written on the top without this uh, uh, UV cutoff are actually uh, eigenfunctions of this k, and they uh, will produce uh, uh, the response to the green function of the same form. Uh, however, uh, when we include the cutoff and we uh, uh, try to re renormalize such sigma, uh, it will also be cut, uh, cut off. It will not uh, propagate to the infrared that corresponds to uh, large values of C. Uh, and uh, uh, the perturbations that uh, uh, make it to the infrared correspond, uh, correspond to poles of this expression. When uh, k is a function of h, uh, because uh, h, uh, the scaling uh, exponent, is a parameter uh, of uh, uh, this tentative function, when h uh, has some special value, then uh, uh, the denominator uh, in this expression vanishes, and uh, only, only then the perturbation uh, makes it to the infrared. And one can uh, identify the scaling exponents. Uh, the leading scaling exponent uh, turns out to be 2, uh, but uh, there are high, higher exponents. And uh, 
the actual calculation involves um, uh, uh, h equals 2. Uh, we can uh, use this and that with h equals 2 and calculate the effect of such a perturbation on various quantities. Uh, we can uh, calculate the effect of the green function and we cal uh, can calculate uh, the effect of the energy of the soft mode. And this way uh, will uh, relate the coefficient alpha s in the effective action to uh, the UV perturbation of the green function. So uh, now things uh, are getting uh, too complex. Uh, let me uh, explain what, uh, what, uh, what's uh, relevant to the black hole. Uh, all this uh, perturbation story is not relevant, uh, at least uh, not directly. Uh, we uh, may focus on the effective action. This is the effective action. And uh, that effective action corresponds to uh, a circle that uh, fluctuates. Uh, we can see the various deformations of the circle uh, described by diffeomorphism phi. And uh, Uh, now, we can calculate the following quantity. This is the connected correlator. Uh, it's proportional to n to the minus 1. Um, and uh, if we really want to calculate it, we can do So we consider uh, GIR as a, a function that depends on phi, and uh, we integrate o o over uh, the fluctuating variable phi using the effective action. Should be. Uh, this way, we obtain. Uh, an expression in the uh, Euclidean time domain on, on the unit circle. Then we analytically, analytically continue it to real times and uh, consider uh, configuration uh, where uh, those times alternate on the unit circle. And uh, when uh, we do the analytic continuation, it will be uh, an out-of-time order correlator. And uh, uh, this way, uh, one can 
uh, find exponential growth. That was uh, done by uh, Moldasena and Stanford. Uh, and uh, there are other ways uh, uh, to do, obtain just uh, the Lyapunov exponent. Uh, the Lyapunov exponent itself may be obtained uh, uh, using uh, sym uh, symmetry properties uh, of, of, of this correlator. But uh, I guess uh, uh, the time is up, so uh, let me finish here. Thank you for your attention. Okay, we have time maybe for one or two very desperate questions. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is desperate. So, um, uh, uh. The, the, I haven't completely understood the, um, the perturbation picture. Like when you have a perturbation uh, that corresponds to the diverging um, eigenvalue of the propagator, uh, do I have to regularize the propagator rather? Than, and if I do that, it's not really a linear response anymore, right? Uh. You mean uh, what happens uh, when yeah. uh, k has a uh, k has a pole? When k has an eigenvalue one, yeah. Uh, then right. you have to modify the Green's function that show up in the propagator. No, or? no, I don't modify the Green function. Uh, the following thing happens: uh, the ansatz I wrote uh, contains uh, some exponent and uh, a window function. Uh, when we multiply uh, uh, the uh, uh, function uh, uh, tau to the uh, minus h and the window function, effectively uh, h changes because uh, uh, this window function can be represented by uh, using a Fourier transform uh, in the logarithmic uh, coordinate. It can, it can be represented as a sum of different h's. <coughs> And uh, uh, therefore, instead of uh, infinity here, we get an integral of uh, 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 exponents uh, near uh, uh, that given h. And that integral converges. OK. OK, if there are no more questions, then let's Thank Kitaev again for the beautiful lecture. <laughs>